Hello Year 4, what a pleasure it is to see you again. Hopefully you've had a really nice week uh, and I'm going to be doing a little bit more RE with you today. So, lesson 5 of looking at the Muslim community in the UK. We've looked at uh, where they live or where there are large Muslim communities in Britain. We've looked at where those communities have their roots. So what countries did people immigrate from to the UK, whether recently or in the past. We looked at um, the Grand Iftar in Bristol, which was a meal that they share on the street with lots of people to celebrate uh, breaking their fast in Ramadan. And we looked at Eid celebrations in the UK. And Eid, hopefully you'll be able to tell me, is celebrating the end of the month of Ramadan. Uh, it's where they uh, go to the mosque. It's where they have big celebrations, fireworks. Uh, even at Charles Dickens, we have a lovely celebration of Eid. So. Today, though, we are answering this question. How do Muslims follow the five pillars in the UK? What are the five pillars, I hear you ask? Or maybe you didn't ask, because maybe you already know, because you are way ahead of the game. Maybe you've done this before. I don't really know. Uh, but the five pillars of Islam are five things that Muslims are supposed to do. They are the five duties of Islam. Um, that means if you do these then you are being basically a good muslim for the most part so those are and we're going to go through all five of these uh number one shahada uh, and that means having a faith in one god who is allah uh, and muhammad who is his prophet it's essentially it just means having faith in god salah is prayer and muslims uh, pray five times a day so uh in before sunrise early afternoon late afternoon after sunset and at night but there are five times during the day when muslims should be praying Saum uh, is fasting and that's the month of ramadan that we looked at so not eating during daylight hours in ramadan zakah is alms giving now that's a funny word it just means charity really it means giving a certain amount of your wealth um the amount of your money to muslim or to charities um, and Hajj, you maybe have looked at Hajj before. Hajj is when they travel to the city of Mecca in Saudi Arabia to go on what's called a pilgrimage. And all Muslims are supposed to do that at least once in their lifetime. And we're going to ha have a look at all five of these and how easy or difficult it is for Muslims living in the UK to follow the five pillars of Islam. Oh, before we go any further, as we go, you should hopefully be filling out this table on the last page of your booklet, you can see uh, each of the five pillars is on there. Uh, what does the pillar mean? Well, I've just told you, so you can uh, rewind this and fill that out. Um, and how do Muslims in the UK follow this pillar of Islam? So you can see I've started you off with some writing there, but your job is to fill in that chart. And you can do that as we go along. It might be quite easy. Shahada. Okay, Shahada. Uh, this is having faith in God. So Muslims in the UK are free to worship Islam because we have freedom of religion. That means that you can follow whichever religion you want in the UK. Some states say you have to be a Christian, you have to be a Muslim, you have to be uh, Hindu. I don't know if that's true. But anyway, some states say you have to be a certain religion. The UK does not have that. We have a fundamental freedom, a really important freedom to freedom of religion. So Muslims can worship and pray not only in the mosque, but also at home and in public and do so without uh, being oppressed or persecuted or told off basically by the government. Okay, Salah. Um, most practicing Muslims pray five times a day. That is quite a difficult task. Uh, usually you would have some sort of app on your phone now that can tell you when your five prayer times are. But imagine if you had to do that five times a day, it's quite difficult. So. Often it means they will need somewhere to pray that is not their house or a mosque. Um, and now a lot of uh, built public buildings in the UK provide a space, a prayer room, uh, a quiet place where Muslims can go and pray. Sometimes it might be the Muslim prayer room. Sometimes it might be a multi-faith area. Sometimes it might just be a quiet room. In the school that I used to teach in, we had a room that was just a lovely, quiet room uh, next to the staff room where Muslim staff and Muslim students could go and pray uh, if they needed to. And here on the right, this is an example of one of those multi-faith rooms. Um, this is actually in Westfield Shopping Centre uh, in Stratford. 
uh, and they've built this room as part of a shopping centre, but also you find them in airports, uh, town halls, you find them uh, on ferries even. You would find a nice quiet space where you can go and worship. So that's how Muslims do Salah in the UK. Sawm. Well, we've talked about Ramadan quite a lot. Uh, fasting from food for one month, widely observed in the UK. Um, we looked at the Grand Iftar and a lot of schools and a lot of workplaces try to change the way that they work to accommodate Muslims who fast during this month. So some companies would say, well, you can do more work at home because you're going to be tired during the day. So you might want to do more work in the evening. The school that I used to work in would say, you know, take into account that students were fasting during this time. So make sure that they have plenty of uh time to kind of consider things and yeah basically just make sure that they were doing okay during this month that they were fine uh so that's a way that life is made easier for people but yeah ramadan widely observed in the uk you'd find a lot of cities um that restaurants in muslim areas in particular are not very busy at all during the day during ramadan okay zaka so zaka is uh, the practice of Muslims giving 2.5% of their money to charity. So if a Muslim has £100, they're going to give £2.50 um, to charity. Uh, if a Muslim has £1,000, they're going to give £25 to charity. Um, it's very common in British Muslim communities, and you may even see adverts for it out and about. The one I've got here is on the side of a bus in London, um, talking about donating uh, zaka usually takes place around the month of ramadan uh people give money to charities so yeah you see adverts for it in the uk now um asking muslims to consider giving money to islamic aid or to other charities finally the hajj okay so the hajj is when muslims go on a once in a lifetime pilgrimage to the city of mecca um eight million people that is a lot of people that's more people than live in London uh, go on this pilgrimage from all around the world every year. They go from uh, Russia, they go from South Africa, they go from Iran, they go from all over really to go on this amazing pilgrimage. Uh, and 100,000 people from Britain each year join them on that pilgrimage. And most cities in Britain have special travel agents for this. You might have seen it even where you live. I know where I live in London. Uh, on the street there's a Hajj and Umrah uh, travel agent to help people arrange the Hajj and on the right hand side here you can see an advert from Peterborough um, a city with quite a large Muslim population advertising a seminar uh, where people can learn about going on the Hajj learn how to perform the different acts learn how to get health and safety uh, advice and also you can buy you know guides and cosmetics and money belts uh, to keep yourself safe during this so very common in the UK now to see people arranging these trips to Hajj good right so had to speed through that a little bit but hopefully that was helpful for you don't forget to be you should have been filling this out as you went along um, hopefully you can see it's not uh muslims in the uk do face some discrimination there is what's called islamophobia where people don't like muslims for one reason or another and they decide to take that out on them but also there are a lot of ways in which british culture uh has made it possible for muslims to continue to be muslims to have that freedom of religion to practice their faith so it's an interesting mix in the uk um yeah okay great so I will speak to you next week. Have a wonderful week. Goodbye, year four.